What's up guys? 370 Gaming here, and today I've got a little post-show review slash analysis slash quick thoughts on uh, TNA Slamversary 2016. I live tweeted the show out, uh, and I asked you guys if you wanted to see like a post-show video of sorts, and the uh, response was pretty positive, so here I am. Uh, we're going to go over the card and just my general thoughts on the show and TNA as a whole. Uh, because TNA, you know, it, it's lost a lot of people, it's gained some people back, but not... Uh, it, it's always kind of a roller coaster, so, you know, if you're trying to think, you know, maybe should I check out the show? Uh, yeah, I'll let you know if you should or not. <laughs> um, the first thing I gotta get out of the way, right off the bat, this is the most important takeaway from the show, in my opinion. The the music on this show was god-awful. And you, you don't think to yourself, what's the most important thing in the show? The music. But the music really holds everything together. really brings everything together. The opening of the show today was a memorial, like a moment of silence for uh, the victims of the Orlando shooting. And, you know, it was a very classy, very nice thing. But then after the moment of silence, the Slammiversary video package kicked on and started. And it was just this, like, gloomy depressing like choir song it sounded like the druid theme you know like it was it was really sad and just like really that was like a that was a buzzkill after you already started the show with a buzzkill and uh every time every big moment like you know before the main event started that theme song played and i'm just like what is this god awful piece of music it doesn't even it's not even a bad piece of music it's just bad for what its intended use is why would you have the main of the main theme of your show be a weird, depressing, like, sad-sounding thing. You're supposed to have, like, a cool, like, hard rock, like, something that amps you up for the big moments. That that was a really bizarre choice of a, of music by TNA. And, um, God, the first, like, the first, like, three or four matches just had people with just, like, the most generic rock themes that just had nothing to them, and I was just like, oh, my God, you know, please, somebody... Somebody in the head of TNA in the back, please get a better musical director, okay? So I wanted to, I had to get that off my chest. That was killing me, man. Uh, the first match was a fatal four-way for the X Division Championship. It was Trevor Lee, Andrew Everett, DJ Z, and Eddie Edwards. And uh, Gregory Shane Helms, as he's called now, came out and uh, was immediately ejected. <laughs> he had a nice suit on, he looked good, and then he was gone. And I was like, okay, that was a waste of time. Whatever. So, uh, had a pretty good match. Uh, I, I kind of dig the whole, you know, Eddie Edwards, DJ Z thing. They kind of mesh well, in my opinion. And Andrew Everett just flying his ass off. They got some cool spots throughout the match. Um, yeah. And Eddie Edwards, uh, picks up the win. About 10 minute match. Not too bad. Pretty good opener. And, uh, thought it was cool that Eddie Edwards got the uh, X title. So pretty good, pretty good stuff. Uh, the second match was uh, the Tribunal of uh, Basil Baraka and Baron Dax, with Al Snow, of course, uh, getting the win over uh, Grado, God, I almost said Grado, Grado and Mahabali Shira. And my major problem with this match is that Grado took the pinfall. <laughs> that was my major problem with this match. Why on God's green earth can't Shira take the pinfall? Like, really? Like, Grado's already been, like, jammed down to this level, like, right now. Like, now he's going to take the pinfall, too. Like, that just seems kind of messed up. Uh, I didn't really expect too much from the match. It was pretty pretty basic stuff there. But, um, you know, that's fine, you know. Got to get the tribunal over. And uh, Al Snow's crazy Donald Trump gimmick. Whatever you want to do, man. I liked, the, uh, I liked his butchering of French uh, <laughs> at the beginning. That was pretty good. But, um, yeah, I dig Al Snow, and I dig uh, the whole tribunal, so keep that going. Uh, when the uh, triple threat match was announced, when Maria's hand was, was banged up or, or broken, I don't, I didn't, I was off and on during the middle of this pay-per-view, but uh, uh, I knew once Maria was out of it, it was Sienna and Jade and Gail Kim. I knew Sienna was, <laughs> if you go on my Twitter, I called Sienna winning this match. Uh, I didn't see the turn with Marty Bell, that seemed random. I think if you're a TNA pay-per-view, you just need one random swerve just to swerve people. So I think that was it. That was the mandatory one swerve. Uh, Marty Bell swerving on Jade. And, um, you know, I can't even complain about that too much. Because now Sienna's got the title and, and the whole Maria thing is going to continue. That's fine. Uh, you know, Gail Kim can chase after it. And Jade, 
uh, and Marty Bell got something to do now. So, you know, I can't complain too much, you know? Decent little match. Nothing nothing really to say about the match. Uh, James Storm comes out next. And I'm just, like, wholeheartedly confused. What is James Storm doing here? You know, I thought it was, like, a WWE situation. They didn't announce the match ahead of time. And I'm thinking to myself, who is James Storm fighting? And he says, uh, you know, he gives this weird speech about, like, people that have been in TNA and TNA, like... How, how they've made, you know, they've homegrown people, and it kind of turns out that he's he's talking about, you know, kind of like passing it down, getting people a chance to, to have a time to shine, and uh, so he fights uh, Pepper Parks, who is now Braxton Sutter, that's a name for sure, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and he beats him, and... Um, I really, really thought, and if, again, if you go on Twitter, you see my tweets, I really thought Braxton was going to kick Storm in the nuts, and I'm really glad to see that didn't happen. But um, I also have to question why such a match was on the pay-per-view, when, you know, you could have given, you know, maybe the X Division match a little more time. I guess it was the opener, you wouldn't want to give it too much more time. Um, I can't really complain about the match times, I'm looking at them here. It's about right, I don't know. Could you have done something else rather than James Storm and Braxton Sutter? I would have hoped so. I would have hoped so. Uh, next match was uh, Eli Drake. Eli Drake uh, against Bram for the King of the Mountain Championship, the most useless title in all of TNA wrestling, in all of wrestling almost. Uh, and um, it, it, I was gone for most of this match, I gotta admit. However, I don't feel as if I've missed anything either. Uh, Eli Drake wins. So there you go, retains the title. You know, I'm I'm an Eli Drake fan, so so good with that, good with that. Uh, this right here, this next match, this is the best storyline in TNA wrestling. You can quote me on that. This is the best thing they've got going, and I hope it goes forever because it is just the the storytelling has been the most solid. Everything, Ethan Carter the third versus Mike Bennett, and uh, I love everything about this story. I love. I love Bennett getting the pin over EC3. I think Bennett was a decent choice for that. Uh, Bennett and Maria, they're a great package, of course. And uh, EC3 and Bennett put on pretty good matches. The story has just been great. You know what I mean? Pretty much the greatest story TNA could do at the time, like under their current circumstances. This would be the definitely the best story, if uh, you ask me. And they put on another pretty good match, man. And, uh, you know, some, some shenanigans towards the end. But EC3... Uh, does pick up the win and and culminates his uh his road to redemption you know kind kind of weird I mean he didn't really you're not really redeeming yourself like I guess you're redeeming yourself in the sense that you lost but redeeming is like when you do something wrong I suppose I guess you could say losing was wrong but I wouldn't that seems a little self uh a little self uh, deprecating I don't know is it just me <laughs> I don't know but yeah it got 15 minutes it did what it needed to do and I really expected 25 you know, dirty, messed up things to happen for Bennett to win, and I'm glad that that wasn't the case, so EC3 gets the win there. This was my second favorite part of the show, next to the EC3 Mike Bennett uh, storyline. Matt Hardy comes out, and this piano music starts playing, and I'm just, this is just the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I see the Matt Hardy on the screen. It's kind of like grungy and it kind of slowly zooms in. And then you hear the fucking piano music in the back. And then Rebby Sky comes out and ruins it because she adds nothing to the show with her and her stupid baby. But Matt Hardy comes out and um, is is the great, the great broken Matt Hardy. I'm fully, fully in love with this character. I don't give a shit. I'm going all in on broken Matt Hardy and uh, brother Nero. And, um... Oh my god, the, the match the match in and of itself was, was kind of underwhelming, in my opinion. Like, I think Jeff, you know, when he gave that interview before the match, and he was like, oh, I'm going to try to top Shane McMahon. I'm like, no, you're not, dude. You're not going to top Shane McMahon. But he didn't, I don't think, oh, sorry, I'm choking on nothing. I don't think he, uh, I don't think he got close to Shane McMahon, man. What, like, you know, like, the, the final spot was really cool. He... He uh, swanton from a ladder to the outside through a table, and it was picture perfect. And thank God, I thought he was going to overshoot it, so that was not the case. But um, it was a little underwhelming. I just expected more. You think two Hardys? You think Full Metal Mayhem? I think you think uh, of a little more exciting stuff. Matt Hardy in the greatest spot of the show pulls out a keyboard from under the ring, <laughs> and I just, I cheered, I just clapped, I'm just like, this is fucking great, he pulls out a keyboard, and he sets it up, 
uh, between the ring and the barricade, kind of, and he power bombs Jeff Hardy on the keyboard. <laughs> Just like, this is, this is the best. This is the best, Matt Hardy. This is, okay, nothing tops Matt Hardy from when he was the icon in Ring of Honor. That was the best Matt Hardy. But this is the second best Matt Hardy I've ever seen. This is, this is some top-notch stuff. I can only hope that broken Matt Hardy continues from here because it's it's just going to get better and better. I'm 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 positive. Uh the next the semi main was the uh, tag team title match and I completely forgot that the tag team titles existed. Uh, I don't know why, you know what I mean? There was no like I hadn't seen the decay. I don't know what the hell the decay was doing. I know that the Bromans were like they got some random girl. I don't know why why any of that happened but but it happened and it's here and uh i proposed on twitter <laughs> that the guru chick was gonna screw the bromans and join the decay sadly that did not happen <laughs> sadly the uh, tna did not do that and um you know a lot of chicanery and crazy stuff she did get involved but she attacked rosemary uh everybody got missed it the referee got missed it you know um and the decay won and that the decay should have won. That's all I got to say about that. So, and the final match, TNA World Title, Lashley and Drew Galloway, and uh, Drew Galloway came out with a uh, blue kilt on. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was a nice, nice nod to the old Scottish heritage. You know, uh, kind of felt like a Roddy Piper thing, even though Roddy Piper, you know, he's just Scottish. It's not really a Roddy Piper thing, but uh, I still felt like it was a Roddy Piper thing. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> they had a pretty solid match. They had, I think, they over delivered on what I expected out of a Lashley and Drew Galloway match. Uh, perhaps I underestimated Lashley. Perhaps I underestimated Galloway to carry a match. I don't know, but uh, definitely was better than I thought. Uh, Lashley, I'm already forgetting the finish. Lashley just, uh, I forgot the finish of the match. I know that he made him tap out to uh, like a arm neck submission i think he just speared him and and then hit him with the submission afterwards but uh regardless it was a it was a pass out basically victory he didn't tap he he was knocked out more or less and the submission was the formal uh the formal finish there um i mean i can't really complain about the match too much but i mean i i think galloway should have won that i mean i don't see why you had to give Lashley this victory tonight. You know what I mean? Like, this could have been... And I understand. It was the knockout or tap out. That was the gimmick. You know, Lashley was going to win that match. I understand that. But I think Drew Galloway could have held the title a lot longer. And I think he could have really put a lot more steam towards Drew Galloway. You know, the whole the captain thing. I love that for Drew Galloway. And I think he could have done something really good. But I, I don't know if they just don't have, like, any heel challengers for him. Or... If they just have too many face challengers for Lashley, I don't even know. Who's Lashley going to fight? Like, Jeff Hardy? Like, I assume he's going to fight Jeff Hardy now, but um, I don't know. I just think you, you could have give, given Drew Galloway the finish there, but uh, what are you going to do? So, my final verdict here, I was thinking, was I going to do, like, an out of 10 score? I don't really like out of 10. I, I like more specific kind of deal. Well, also, this is kind of a new thing for me to do, so I'm going to say... I don't think it was worth whatever the pay-per-view... Con I, I kind of watched it, you know, another way. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, if you paid the full, like, 35 40 bucks, I probably would say not exactly worth it. I mean, I'm not going to... But here's the thing. You have such a bad track record of, of prior pay-per-views that you just, like, you're thankful when it's not shit, you know? And this was definitely not a shit pay-per-view. Let me get that out of the way first. This was a this was a pretty good pay per view. It was a pretty average to slightly above average pay per view. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, however, that being said, nothing blew me away. Nothing made me feel like, oh man, that was worth spending you know extra money on. You know what I mean? That was worth the big hype, the big build up. You know what I mean? The only thing worth the hype and the build up was Matt Hardy's theme song and the and the keyboard. Uh, power bomb spot. That was the only thing that was worth the the big hype and the big build up there. But um, you know, I mean, if you if you find it online somewhere, I'd definitely say you could you could give it a watch through. It was easier to watch than a than a Monday Night Raw than some Smackdowns. Uh, I think Impact in and of itself has been a decent watch uh, for the past few weeks. 
minus that you know that that willow garbage that took up like uh 30 minutes that one that one episode that was that was atrocious but uh you know impacts in general have been pretty easy to watch and uh yeah, so that's kind of my final lasting thoughts there on TNA Slammiversary 2016. If you guys want further pay-per-view reviews in the future, definitely leave a like on the video. Hit me up on Twitter, at 370Gaming, to know that you want to see more. And uh, yeah, subscribe for all kinds of wrestling and gaming content in the future. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Peace.